I am back here at the Leighton Orient FC training ground and we are here for another episode of the O Show. Let's get started. So it has not been a bad week to be an Orient fan. We picked up four points from the two games against Haven and Waterlooville and Eastleigh on Tuesday night, scoring five goals in the process. Let's take a look at some of the action. The O's have been in scintillating form recently, scoring some nice little goals there. But we are in for another jam-packed episode today. We're going to be chatting with Martin Ling, Craig Clay and Charlie Lee, as well as hearing from Ruel Satirio. Let's crack on. Has been a good week for Orient, and as always, we've had some cracking tweets coming in. So, up first we have at Jack J Pridmore. He's put at Macaulay Bon. Honestly, mate, you're at the stage now where I'm just going to name all of my children after you. All of them. It's a little bit strange, but still, it's cool. And if your partner is expecting, then good luck with persuading her to call your children Macaulay. And it's a fair point, Macaulay is the top scorer in the National League with 13 goals after Tuesday's goal against Eastleigh. Up next, we've got at 1JT, James Turley. He's put 4-0 win, and my man of the match was still this guy. Absolute hero. Hashtag LFC, hashtag Judman. He's done a little Photoshop jobby there of Miles Judd on the body of Superman. I'm not sure if that, uh, those muscles match up, but <laughs> still a good Photoshop nonetheless. And Miles has been immense, especially at Hampton Waterlooville. He was my man in the match as well. Next, we've got at Darren Reisman. I hope I've said that right, Darren. Dash and Dazza. He's put, no need to panic or get on players' backs. Another game unbeaten. Hashtag E-I-E-I-E-A-L. And hashtag Injustin we trust. And he's got a point there. We've only lost one game all season in the league. And we're playing some lovely, lovely football. So, stay positive. Also, we have at Lou Bear 84 Louise Tienens. She's replied to a Leighton Orient tweet and she's referred to Craig Clay as Clay Dino, as young Riley calls him. It's not bad, let's see if that can stick and catch on. Now, I've got Craig Clay and Charlie Lee, the dynamic centre midfield duo, waiting for me in the boot room. Let's go and have a chat with them and see how they're getting on. Right, so I'm now joined by Charlie Lee and Craig Clay, our centre midfield pairing from last night. Thank you very much for joining us, no boys. Right. So, how are you feeling after last night's uh, draw at Eastleigh? Uh, Bit tired, not yeah. gonna lie. It's a little bit cold, I think. It was a cold night on it, but freezing. Uh, a little bit disappointed not to take all three, but like we were saying, it's probably a, a, a hard fought point now and yes. probably be vital come the end of the season. Yeah, sometimes a point away from home on Tuesday night isn't a bad thing. I thought we probably were the better team, but poor goal that we let in. And uh, But sometimes you've got to take the point, it's not a bad result. Yeah, no, it was, um, and it's always good come from a goal down. Um, Charlie, you, you got yourself a new song last night. 
about how we all love Charlie. And your long throws were causing havoc. Is that something you've been working on in a in training a fair yeah, bit? Yeah, it's set pieces yeah. at any level in the Premier League all yeah. the way down are tough. So if you can get the ball in the box from throwing, it's gonna it's gonna cause problems. It was, especially with the, the the dangers that we've got. Yeah, and Clay, uh, Saturday's four 0 win at Haven, you. You pulled the strings. You were you were phenomenal, um, and it saw you in the National League Team of the Week. It must be nice to get that recognition. Yeah, it's always obviously it's always nice to get a bit of recognition and getting the Team of the Week. But I think I think everyone had a good game Saturday. Mm. For my shot, I mean, Chas scored an absolute worldie. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> my old, my centre mid uh, partner. So yeah, you know, what I mean, it's always nice. But as long as we're winning, then I'm happy. Yeah. So. And I was going to say because you two have kind of formed quite a, a <coughs> partnership in the middle of the park. Something we didn't really see until you were injured last season, but it must be good having that that partnership and that know-how alongside each other. Is yeah. it nice? Last we year, joked about it a lot. We did, year. yeah, because last <laughs> year we played. It was my first game. I came um, in pre-season, wasn't it? And we yeah, we, we did alright really that game. Well, and yeah. we did play at all. It was like right, we're going to get to play <laughs> play again together soon. That's so now we've, we're getting a little run together. Yeah, so I think we're doing alright together. But yeah. we, we we say every day, um, training the hardest. Midfield partnerships we play against it all season is in training oh, yeah. every day. Yeah. So yeah. we we play against Alex Lawrence and Dal Gorman every day. Yeah. So what we play against on Saturday is just not as good yeah. as them. Really? I was going to ask about the quality of competition quality. that you've got. You have got, as you say, Dal yeah. and Dal and Lawless. So, Joby, you can play in the middle as well. Yeah. It's Realistically, you we're not going to come up against a team this season that's got. A Gorm, an, Ale uh, an Alex Lawrence and a Dale Gorman in mm. them, so for us it's like you must be, you're yeah. getting pushed as yeah. well. Yeah, definitely. You have one to eye keep, over the shoulder. You have to keep your performances high because you've got two top quality midfielders yeah. ready to come in at any time. Yeah, and because you you had a bit of a number switch up at the beginning of the season. You used mm. to be number eight. You've yeah. taken he, it. You no, no, his he, number. No, he gave it. You messaged me. Yeah. It's like, look, I've given you number eight because you. you when I, when I first well, joined, I when I first joined Leighton Orient, I wanted twenty two. Okay. Martin Lynn text me saying, what do you want, 4 or 8? I asked for 22, he, he ignored the message. <laughs> <laughs> so then about two weeks later, he come through, he said, did you pick, or like about a week later, did you pick what number you want? I went, I said, oh, I'd like 22, but obviously I'd, 8 if you want. He just texted back saying, 8's yours. So I'm guessing he wanted to fill up <laughs> yeah. the 1 to 11. Yeah. What, is there a story behind the number 22? 22, What's both my sons are born on the 22nd. It's oh. my favourite number. I was 22 before... And I wanted to keep it when I come here, and then obviously after the injury. And did your career peak at 22 as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he probably did actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, obviously um, after the injury last year, I, I said, look, I'm having number 22. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we'll blame that <laughs> knee injury on the number. No, it won't number do a number, but you just want to say that. No, 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 no. Don't say that. No, yeah, no, don't don't say that. that. It's got nothing to do with the number. It's just, you just want yeah. to go back. I wanted yeah. 22 originally. I love the number, so. Uh, have have you got any superstitions? Anything you um, do for a game? Or? I always do, as I come out, Oh, I'm always nearly throwing up. So Trust says every game. I always do a, I do a shot before every game, like a caffeine shot. And for some He's reason, got a he's on the sambuca. No, no, no. no. <laughs> when we come right, out, if I don't hear him yak, I go crazy. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I do it before uh, before every game. But no, I always do five knees to chest or five little jumps, just because five's my lucky number. It's just okay. it's a silly little one, but just something you always have in your head. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's always something. I do it five times because that's my lucky number. So yeah. Nice. And and we travel to Fylde on Saturday. <clears throat> It's gonna to be tough. It's gonna to be cold. It's gonna to be tough. They're what a really, you? they're a really good team. They're, they sure. they're probably one of the more impressive teams there yeah. throughout the yeah. league. And we've you could probably say one football. of the toughest oppositions we're gonna to face so far this season. Would Definitely. you say? Yeah, but I think it's gonna be a, probably. I reckon it's gonna be a good footballing game. Mm. I think they like to try and play, and obviously we mm. we like to play. So I think yeah, as a neutral, it's gonna be a good footballing game. But it's gonna to be tough. They're only a, a couple of points behind. I think they've got the best. Best defensive record now. They've been yeah, seven or something. Like, yeah, well, so, so it's got to, something's got to give. So now we'll be we'll be ready. We'll be doing our, our preparations. You know what I mean? All week working on stuff. So we'll be ready to go up there. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm hoping for another thirty yard screaming yeah, Chaz. No, that's once in once every I four don't know or about five that. years. You've got, you've, got, you've got a couple in you, mate. So I, I think you've got another one. Yeah. yeah, I think you do. Well, thank you for joining us, boys, and good luck on the weekend. Thank you very and much. Pleasure thank having you. Thank you, John. Thank you. So I have Martin Ling, our director of football, waiting for me just down there in his office. Let's go and have a chat with him and see how he's been getting on since we last spoke with him. Right, now here I am in Justin Edwards' office with our director of football, Martin Ling. Martin, thanks for joining me again. Cheers, no problem. It's a pleasure to have you back. Um, <clears throat> last time you were on the show, it was the day after the Ebbsfleet game and we hadn't won a game yet. We've gone on a pretty good run of form since then, you know, only lost once. 
you must be pretty pleased with how it's gone so far. Yeah, because I think at that stage when we talked about it, we so we was never never lost. Yeah, we never won, and we didn't quite know you know how the season was going to go. And since then, it's been you know highly successful, as you said. There's been plenty of wins. There's been plenty of draws. Yeah, but the, the, the main fact there's only been one loss. Mm -hmm. And it puts us in the situation where you know we're just one point off the top, and, and you know things are rose in the garden as we speak here, sitting here today. Yeah, um, we, we played Eastley last night, battled back from a from a goal down. You know it, it didn't look like it was dropping for us at the time. It was freezing cold. Were you there? Did you? Yeah. What were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I just I just spoke to Justin about it just now. I just that's a game we would have lost previously. Mm. I don't think we played very well. There wasn't enough players that were to their best. Yeah. We had some players. I tend to put it, if you if you have eight good performances, you can carry the other three. Mm -hmm. But if it's the other way around, where you have three good performances and eight not so good performances, you tend to lose the game. But when, we, when we've been like that in a couple of games that we've played recently, we've been able to get a result. And when you sit there watching it, I just feel that we look a lot more resilient. I always feel that we're going to get a result, whether that's a win or a draw. That comes from confidence, I, I accept that, but also there is big resilience in the side. And we played in a couple of spurts last night. I thought first 15 we wasn't too bad. I thought we were on top for the first yeah. 20, I'd say. Yeah, 20. and then the 21st, 20, 20 minutes of the second half, and mm. it only looked like one winner once we got the equaliser. Yeah. But we come away with a point, and, and as I say, we walk away disappointed of a, a, a point against a team that, for me, will be in the top. I think they'll be top half. Top half. Yeah, yeah they, they so. look like a well drilled out, but they've got some good players. So, yeah, I think other teams will go there and struggle. Mm. I don't, you know, it ain't, it's never going to be an easy three points for anyone that goes there. I, mean, I think Salford actually go there Saturday, and then you look at that and think to yourself, well, maybe they're going to struggle like we struggled. Was they, they were decent. We wasn't at our best, uh, and if you get them two combinations, yeah. it tends to end in a loss. But last night ended in a draw. And for the last half hour of last night's game, I think just before we scored. They had about ten men in their own half. They were sitting so deep. It must be almost a compliment to to such an attacking side. You know, top scorers in the league. It, it must be almost a pleasure yeah. to, to know that teams are setting up like that against you. Yeah, two things make that happen. One is the ball retention from from ourselves. Yeah, uh, and reputation of ourselves. So they, that they would know what we're about. What that we're a top team, and they would they would drop back naturally. It's a natural yeah. thing to do as a player when you're winning the game. But also, when pit teams do that, you've got to be able to retain the possession of the ball, which we did yeah. you know, in that last half hour. Well, we, as you say, you always thought we were going to get the equaliser, and, 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 you, and you also thought that you might just go and nick it as well. Mm. And that's, as you just said, it's compliments to us as we are as a side at the moment, and to the, you know, Justin and the coaching staff that, that are instilling that into the players. Now, we travelled to Fylde on Saturday. Um, they're, they're a tough side, aren't they? They're gonna, it's going to be probably one of our tougher games of the season. What are your what are your thoughts ahead of it? Yeah, sitting here looking at the league table, uh, looking at some of the clippage, uh, film clippage I've seen this morning in terms of them. They're a good side, you know. They're not been in this at this level very long, but they've got decent money. Mm. You know, they've got they've got players that are more than capable of playing now and, and, and going to fold away. Uh, I think it's going to be our biggest test or one of our biggest tests, you know, apart from Salford. I don't been away. To agree. Yeah, you know, I mean, last night was a, a test against a top, a top twelve team, but I think we'll be playing against a team that I expect to be top seven They'll away be from in the home. Playoffs, yeah, I'd, I'd expect. Were they yeah. in the playoffs last season, or no, did they just miss no, out? No, they just missed out last year. But it was their first year in the, at this level. Okay. Uh, they've spent big money. Uh, they've got. They've obviously got that Danny Rowe, who's yeah, a goal machine. They've gone under the radar a little bit because of Salford, because Salford have made all the headlines because of the money they're spending. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if you look at their player roster and their budget you know it's another one that would be bigger than our uh, so it, that tells me everything I've just said and everything you've said tells me it's going to be a big test but okay. as I said the word I used earlier was resilience and I think we've got resilience going away from home yeah. you know I'm going up there with them on Friday which is unusual I normally go up on a Saturday but I'm having an overnight stay with them like it, night out in Blackpool I don't know. <laughs> I'm past that now night out, night out in Blackpool without and kiss me quick and all that I don't think it's me anymore but yeah I'm going I'll, I'll do a, I normally do a, a trip on a Friday one before Christmas one after okay. Christmas and, and this is the one I've chose to go with okay. And yeah, I'm going up there, sitting on the coach, driving up there on tomorrow after uh, Friday after training. I'll be going up there feeling confident that we can get mm. a result. 
And and you mentioned there, obviously, we're coming up to that busy Christmas period and January where the the windows always open for us, but where the window opens for the other leagues. Can the fans be expecting any any loan signings or any any incomings to support the the busy schedule ahead? Well, the way I look at it, I call it an evolving squad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, so I don't believe a squad's ever set in stone. Uh, um, and that's the reason I call it evolving squad. There's, there's always times during a season where you need to evolve it. You know, you need to fit someone in. You might mm-hmm. need to get somebody out. You know, I've got Steve Foster who's in there having a cup of coffee with everybody else this morning. He's my chief scout, so, and, okay. and he's got a, a, a nucleus of scouts who are out there on the ground all the time. You know, he went and found Marvin Ekpatita, and if he comes and says to me, "I've got another Marvin Ekpatita I've just found," then he I deserves a pay rise for that. He does, <laughs> he does, and, and I don't mind giving him the credit. Obviously, yeah. uh, me, Justin, and everybody else went and watched him. And we had to sign it off, but yeah. the be all and end all is he, he's out there finding him on the ground, and. and if we develop a problem within the squad, mm. or we or we perceive there to be a problem in the squad, we will take that to, or Justin will take that to me, or we will talk about it with Steve and the rest of the coaching staff. That will come to me, I'll get involved in that with them as well, and then if we feel that we need to do something, there's a budget that mm. the board have set, and there is some of that budget that's set aside for emergencies, and loans become an emergency. So I've sort of gone round the question. If we need, if we feel we need to go and get somebody, we we can. Cool. So it's a case of do we need to? I think sometimes people you've got to be careful. Uh, and what I say by that is that I think when you've got a very settled group of players, they're doing very well. Sometimes fetching one or two new into the mix can can, can co- throw the balance can throw the balance completely. So we've got to be careful of that because we know what we got. But yeah. if we feel that it's the right person to do the right job and to add to the group that we've got, then we can do it. Yeah. Here I am with Ruel Satirio. Ruel, You're thanks right. for coming on the show. So, How you been? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. You You're good? Yeah, not yeah. bad, not bad. Um, so just having a quick chat about you. You've recently gone out on loan to, where have you been? Chelmsford. Chelmsford, Chelmsford City. City? Yeah. Tell, tell us through that, have you have you been training with them yet? No, I'm training tomorrow for the first time with them, but I was involved in yesterday's match against Concord. Oh, okay. And yeah. how'd, you, how'd you get on? Yeah, we lost 3-0, but I came on. Uh, how, how much did you play? 30 minutes, so just get to know my new teammates. Because it's, it's not your first loan spell of, of recent times. You've been... Am I right in saying you went to Leatherhead? Yeah, Leatherhead. And, and anywhere else? Uh, Bishop Stalford earlier this season and um, Haybury Swifts okay. at the start of this season, last, was it? last season. Okay, and how, yeah. how's that gone for you? How have yeah, you found your loan spells? Yeah, it's been good just playing against men. Yeah? Getting back into that like, full match fitness as well. So okay. It's good. Yeah. Okay, and so is Orion, am I right in saying Orient's the first club you've, it's just the only club you've ever really Played for, for no, I was at um, Barnet. Oh, okay, yeah. as a youngster. Yeah, I was actually a centre half. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <coughs> yeah, I actually got released from there, oh. and then I came from Warren. Yeah. And and got put up top. Yeah. So what? No, because I was originally a striker. Okay. And then I, they put me centre back. Why? Stand up second. Stand up a second. Why they put him centre back? <laughs> I mean, you told me the other lads at the time. Yeah, got a lead for me, don't I? So, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, when, when did you join the O's? Um, under 15s. Start of under 15s. Uh, you start, so, you joined from the under 15s yeah. level. And, and you're what, 17, 18 now? Yeah, just on 18. Just on happy birthday, when was you? <laughs> oh, no, August. But, uh, well, happy birthday for August. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, you must kind of. You've been in around the first team now, what feels like as a from an Orient fans view yeah. for, for a couple of seasons you've, you, your name's been put about yeah. you must have your eye on that on that first team looking to make an impact soon obviously it's the club that I play for so I just want to play for this first team and um, but obviously doing really well so yeah, it's, it's a hard team to break yeah, into when you've got one of the top scorers in the league yeah. Are you, so training with obviously the top scorer in the league mm. and, and experienced strikers like Matt Harold and and James Alabi, yeah. it must be good training with that calibre of, of players, how is that for you? Yeah, because they, well most of their career they've played week in, week out, so it's good to get some advice and like, things I can put into my game to help me. Yeah, yeah. nice. Well it's been lovely chatting to you, Ro. Um It's a bit chilly out here, so we'll finish yeah. this one up. Thank you for joining us, right. and uh, good luck on your loan spell. Thank you.